Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Liz and Lex. We're back in studio this week, and I just told Alex that I have a gift for her. Thank I, you. I Thanks, bought this for girl. you when I was supposed to go to your house for your housewarming, and then oh my we all God. got sick and canceled. Um, I'm scared. There's two things. There's one little small thing, and then there's that. Oh, I love this. So, okay. I have opinions. Like, okay. I was like, I don't want you to think I think you need to heal because the book says healing through words. But I Chapter love one hurting. Stop. <laughs> but I love a workbook. And it's a workbook for all different like facets of things. No, I love this. I do my like gratitude journal every single I, morning with the prompts. I did a workbook and it literally changed my life. And it's just like therapy in a book. And I was like, I feel like you're into self like reflection like me. I am. And I was like, this is a re- it's also just beautiful to like put on your car. Table. I know. Thank you. Wait, I can't look at this. Now and then there's something really small in there as well. Is it chai? <laughs> it chai, was. are you in here? What is, is this? It? It's just, you'll see. It's small. It's like so small. <laughs> so I got myself one too. It's just a little heart. Oh, thank you. Like when I did my money manifestation, I like yes. put it next to like the money. Oh and my just, like, God. good vibes. It's good vibes. It's love. I'm calling in love. Yeah, and, like, also, they say that when you get a new apartment, you're supposed to, like, put, put things a through the door. Like, walk things through the door that you want to, like, achieve. Oh, so, like, so, you, like love. you could, like, walk love in. Um, I also saw this thing yesterday on TikTok, this, like, cleansing thing you can uh, do and it's like put cinnamon and lemon lemon and whatever in a bowl and it's like a monthly cleansing ritual that was like for the your money thing had cinnamon yes. in it because it was like blow cinnamon through your house i was like okay i, I mean know. i'll do anything what no same i mean i blew that cinnamon right through my door like fully but that's why i was like i love a workbook like it's so no good. thank you um, but i appreciate that hi everyone welcome back hi uh, <laughs> Alyssa here just jumping in to tell you really quickly that i created a wish list on macy's.com for you guys to shop all of my fashion, beauty, shoe, accessory picks. Um, I really hand curated every single thing. So if you want to wear some of the outfits that I wear or just get some inspo for summer fashion, you could click the link in my bio and it will take you to my wish list where I hand selected and curated all of my favorite things just for you guys. And just so you know, Macy's is having their lowest prices of the season, April 9th to April 14th. And you could shop everything in store or online. I recommend you shop online so you could use my wish list and hand pick everything. But there will be 20 to 75% off home and luggage. 40 to 60 percent off women's clothes shoes and handbags and 50 to 60 percent off men's suits shoes ties and more so again don't forget it's always in the link in my bio on instagram and tiktok and here on youtube and you could shop all of my picks <laughs> so we are gonna have a little quickie today but we still have so much to chat about um we'll do yes. a little catch up and then we will talk through this week's topic which is dating mm-hmm. and then we'll talk about some pop culture obviously okay tell me about palm springs and your uh, week so first of all i haven't seen you in so long it's so nice to be I in know. here it's i so feel nice. like energized and ready to I go know. it actually does really help with your day when you like work from home and you're alone to see someone i know it really does and energize break it yeah so i palm springs my best friend jill from new york was in town um and she, she was actually in Palm Springs for work, so her boyfriend flew in to meet her there for the weekend. Okay. She, like, extended her trip. So she was like, if you and Sean are, like, nearby, Around. come through, because Sean's new place is, like, an hour outside of Palm Springs. Oh, nice. Um, but I'm not allowed to bring Chai to his place, which is kind of annoying. So I had a house sitter come here for the weekend, and little Chai was with her, and then I went to Sean's... The- Friday night and then Saturday morning we drove down to Pump Springs. I booked a hotel last minute on Hotel Tonight, which like I always do that because it's like such cheap deals. Really? I've used that app. Like I've seen it, yeah. but I've never booked on do it. Do you know I use it? I booked it like in eight countries. Like they said something like, This is your eighth city. What? Or like I've, I've used it in Portugal. I've used it in, I've used it in the most niche places because you they like put their hotels by like Lux, basic, yes. solid, and then there's um users leave pictures. Oh. And it's really good with last minute deals. So like you could book a few weeks in advance, which oh, is okay, what I okay, did. Yeah. It doesn't have to be it that night. Be that. I thought that's what it was. It was like this block gets released. But if you do it that day, it's way cheaper. 
Got so it. if you're like I'm I'm live willing on the edge to risk your, it, which yeah. I am not. No. My Virgo ass is no. not like, I'll do it last minute. So I booked it like two weeks before and all the hotels were so expensive because it was Easter weekend. Mm. And I saw this one, it was like two fifty. So I'm like, that's doable. It had a pool, it was really nice and new. Yeah, and clean. the pool looked cute. Your yeah. pics look cute. So we had a great time. So Sean and I went to um Palm Springs, we went out to dinner. Ironically, his friends were in town, so we hung out with them nice. for like like beverages, like Pre yeah, little dinner cockies. cocktails. Yeah. yeah, cockies. <laughs> and then we hung out with Jill and Jared for dinner. And then the next day, Jill, the event that she was working for work was a golf tournament. So oh, we got yeah. to go. Oh, my God. It yeah. looked really cute. Yes, I did watch all of this play out. Yeah. <laughs> and Sean and I were just saying, like, on the way home, he was like, I feel like I've been there for 10 years and it was one night. And I'm like, same. And it actually made me realize how much of, like, a mental break I actually was able to take not being in my apartment. Mm -hmm. And he felt the same way. We were like, we actually feel like we had a weekend. Yes. I think there's two factors to that. Like, number one, Palm Springs is like you enter a vortex. Yes. And everything just, like, slows down. Everything closes early. I was in Don't Worry Darling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's just like you're in this other, you're like, you're yeah. in this other world and I feel like you can genuinely slow down. But I agree with you about like being out of your space. Like even this weekend, I didn't do anything on Saturday mm -hmm. night, but like I'm like in the space that I live and work. So like I was like on my laptop yep. doing, tinkering with emails. Da, da, and I'm like, that's not a real break. And that's what I do. Yes. And I realized how nice this was. You know what you could do? If you're, since Go you're a planner like me, <laughs> yes. But on like a Saturday morning, look at like a Saturday night Palm Springs hotel for cheap. I know. And grab a girlfriend and take the drive. And you know where I want to do that is like Malibu, like yeah. going to Surf Riders for Laguna. A night. Yeah. Like, and just because I actually felt like I was able to unplug. It was really nice. Like, we both really felt that way. We were like, wow, we feel like we took a week-long vacation and it was, like, 24 hours. Good. Because we were just in a different dimension. And, like, we had a hotel, we had a pool and it was raining, but, like, Sean kept going in the hot tub. And, like, we <laughs> came back. Yeah, of course. We came back home after dinner, fully went in the hot tub. Like, we just had so much fun. And you drank alcohol. Oh, I know. I drank um, an espresso martini. Yeah. I drank on Friday and I was like, oh, I'm so tired. Oh, wait. I have a new idea for a cocktail okay situation so you know how you could get like a double like if you want a vodka soda you could be like kind of a double vodka soda and they'll give you double the amount of alcohol mm -hmm. i want something to be called a petite oh because for example jill and i we only had like a half hour to get a drink and then we had to go to our reservation so i was like we got one espresso martini and had the guy split it into two glasses <sighs> and it was the perfect little amount and i know most people like love to drink so they wouldn't really order a petite but i actually love the idea of if you want a sugary cocktail but you don't want the full thing or if you just want like a taste to something yes i love the idea of being able to get like a half cocktail wait i love that idea isn't it a good idea yes or it's like if you want like a petite instead of a double or a half it's like give me half a shot and the same amount of like soda water yes, or whatever yes i think that's such a good idea i think me too i would totally do that especially for like an espresso martini or like a because... smaller glass of wine versus like a six ounce like give me three or yes, like four instead of nine exactly because sometimes it's like an after dinner drink and you don't want a full cocktail yes i was having this conversation with my friend's fiance this weekend because they also came to town and like i like the act of drinking as like a social thing. I don't really care if it's alcohol or not, but like I yes. like the taste of beer. Like I like decaf coffee. Like I like mm. the taste of coffee. And he's like, he was like, oh, so like you'll drink alcohol or non-alcoholic beer when you're out. And I'm like, yes, because I actually I like, like it. the taste, yeah. but I'm it also the feels like I'm like doing something social. Yeah. Um, but I love this idea of a petite. I think it's really good, Let's right? Let's go order some. <laughs> um, and then one last thing before I move on and we talk about your weekend was I finally nailed down a clinic that I'm going to be working with to freeze my eggs. Amazing. Yay. In LA? Uh, like in the in East New Coast? In New York. So it's um, we're going to be working with Spring Fertility. I went and had a consultation with them. And like before we decided to work together, we wanted to make sure that I was like comfortable with their doctors and mm -hmm. their process. And like I found it to be really like enlightening they had which i really liked because they had an entire like powerpoint that they walked me through about like fertility and percentages and ages and and the whole process like was spelled out really clearly yep. which i think is beneficial because a lot of people have no idea about the process when i did it i had no, no clue. clue none luckily <laughs> <laughs> chai's eating her bra i call it her bra her harness 
luckily she's so damn cute luckily i had a little bit because i've known so many friends and people that have gone through it yeah but the average person i really don't think knows much no and they don't teach us this stuff like no pcos like the the fertility of your eggs the follicles everything like the yeah we medication looked at my you have to take which how do they good. look it was she like said that she thinks i had like had ovulated on one side so i probably had less mm. but i had average for my age which makes good. me feel really good and happy um it makes me also feel like this is the right time to be doing this yeah and um i am going to be working with them in i just emailed them back today about potentially freezing my eggs in may yeah um so yeah i mean there's a chance that i might never have to use these eggs that i'm freezing and that would be a blessing but there's also a chance that i try to get pregnant in a few years and i have trouble and i need to use them so for me it's just like knowledge is power and and i know i want kids for certain and i don't want to ever be in the situation where i'm not able to because i wasn't Mm -hmm. proactive in my younger years so i'm really just doing this like for myself A hundred percent. It changes like the entire dynamic, at least in my opinion. It was like, I know that I have them. I know that I'm fertile. I, you know, it's like peace of mind. You take the the pressure off. Like for me, I I feel very fortunate. Like it worked out very well for me. Like I'm extremely fertile, which I kind of knew based Mm. on my family history. Um, Like there's a lot of women in my family that had kids well into their 40s even. Mm, That's great. But like, I think what I said when I started the process to my friends was like, I just want peace of mind. And that for me was really either way. If they were like, you're not fertile, then I can reframe my mindset. Like I want to be a mom. The definition of mom is so broad for me, like whether it was adoption or whatever. And I just wanted to have that peace of mind. And it made me feel so much better. That's what I feel like. Knowledge really is power. And I'm just excited to move forward with this good and i was able to find out that i could do this before my fibroid surgery so now i'm shifting things i'll do this this summer my fibroid surgery in the fall and i just feel good that i finally like have answers and yes it will be good good so tell me about your lovely i mean i had friends in town what else is new (laughs) i know do you know i was thinking i haven't had a friend in town in a while i've had one so I, I calculated this. I'm like, I've had them since the middle of February, like mm-hmm. right after Valentine's Day. And the only weekend I didn't was the weekend that I moved, mm-hmm. the first weekend of March. So it's been like five or six weeks Wow! in the seven weeks that have passed that I've had people here. And that's great. I think next year I'm going to be like, here is the window. You all mm. come at the same time and we'll do something bigger. Because what I also realized is like, A... I need downtime on the weekends. I'm really busy during the week. We always have events. I have events with work. Like, I want to be social, but, like, I need my weekend time. And so much of that time gets eaten up trying to entertain people or meet them or Mm -hmm. whatever. And it's, like, it's just a lot. And it's expensive. And I love you all, but I'm just, like... You need a break. I need a break. Like, that's too much. Like, six weeks in a row is a lot. It's a lot. And I also feel like when I have guests in town that it feels like groundhog's day because a lot of mm-hmm. them want to do the same thing like especially when i lived in west hollywood it was like a r- it was it's like, like a i want to go to craig i want to go to air one let's go now to let's go to Malibu Malibu for the day do Mal- yeah i was like it is groundhog's it's day la basic bitch itinerary yes. i'm telling you and it's so fun i get it but it's yeah. like so there's a couple of things i realized and i think that i, I want to say them because i think it's a really good preface into our topic of the day is like it i realized that I've been, like, back on dating apps and things Mm -hmm. like that. And it's, like, I haven't, like, gone on a single date in these last six weeks, even though I've, like, talked to people and made plans. It's always time because I don't have time. And I'm, like, I actually really need to prioritize, like, my needs. And I'm making time. Saying, yeah, I was saying to my friend, it's, like, I have free time, but none of it is my own time because I'm always Mm -hmm. entertaining people and this is like not meant to like rag on anybody i'm so happy to do this yeah yeah but it's but like it was plans that you I made need to be better to be like actually i'm not free that weekend yeah. like i need that for myself so even my friends were here this weekend i saw them friday night i saw them saturday during the day and i was like saturday night like i need to be at home like yeah. i'm exhausted i had my team from work here in town all week mm-hmm. so i had dinners tuesday wednesday thursday and then Friday, like with my friend who came into town, it's like, oh, I would die. We had an event on Wednesday. I was just like, I need a day because I, my family comes this Friday and then I go to Coachella on Monday until the 22nd of April. Mm. So I'm just like, 
I, I need to say no to hanging out with you. Like, I saw you Friday. I saw you Saturday. I love you. I'm coming home in two weeks. Like, I need a day to myself. Yeah. And so I did that, which was Good. great. Um, You're but making progress. It's so hard for me. I know. I had somebody else write me on Instagram, and they were like, I'm going to be in town this week. Da, da, da. I'm like, no. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I have an event on Thursday. My family comes Friday. I have an event tonight. Like, no. Who did I just say that? It was you. You were like, you want to go to an event. And I said, like, it's the event I have on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. You said, you want to go to an event with me? And it was in West Hollywood. And I said to you, I'm going to say no instead of saying yes and canceling <laughs> on Wednesday. <laughs> right. Because I know myself. And when Thursday rolls around, I'm going to mm-hmm. be like, you did too much this week. Why did you say yes to this event? And I don't want to cancel last minute. Correct. So I proactively was Which like, I so I'm appreciate just going to say no because I know when Thursday comes around, I'm going to be like, why are you driving all the way to West Hollywood yep. today? So like, Correct. I'm even trying to be better at it because <laughs> it's I, hard. I have a lot going on as well, like with the move coming up and all of these things. And I totally understand that and relate to that um i think we could just pivot into this week's topic which is dating and i did write down some things here that i did want to talk about i think there are the obvious things like the apps and all of that but i think the topic that you and i have talked about privately that i want to also publicly talk about and dive into a little bit deeper Mm -hmm. is the conversation around checking in on your single friends without being patronizing um because i've expressed to you before that when i was single i had sometimes felt i felt both ways i felt like there were moments when my friends just never even asked about my dating life that it made me feel really shitty because it was just always like how's work any updates and i think they were waiting for me to take the lead and there were times when i really didn't have updates to share but that always kind of made me feel shitty i was like I would love someone to check in on me and be like, hey, I know you're alone this holiday. Mm -hmm. Like, do you need a friend? And I really didn't find that people did that for me. But then the flip side of the coin is there are times when people do check in on you and it could sound patronizing. Yeah. Like, I know you're alone, but like, so my question is, and I don't know the answer because I don't even know how I felt when I was single, is... How could people check on their single friends in a respectful way that's not making them feel uncomfortable or, like, even more sad if they are sad? I mean, I think first and foremost, like, you don't have to preface it like, I know you're alone. Just be like, hey, it's Easter. Do you want to join, like, us Mm. for lunch or whatever? Or, you know, we're going to my family or we're having these people over. Do you want to join us? I think that's it's as simple as, like, do you want to join us? You don't have to be like, I know you're alone. Like, the sorry, it's okay. Um, see, I but I feel like when I was single, I did want people to ask, like, I did want people to acknowledge sometimes that I was like not having a partner to share things with. Do you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, sometimes it just felt like you spend so much time celebrating your friends that are, like, getting engaged and having baby showers and bridal showers. And I just sometimes wanted people to, like, acknowledge that I had other things going on in my life, too. Yes. I think I find this really interesting because I actually, on the other side of that coin, like, wouldn't want, like, I don't care if somebody acknowledges that I'm alone. Like, I feel so whole. Mm in who I am and, like, by myself, which I think is really important for me. Yeah. That, like, I don't need you to, like, acknowledge. Like, I don't care if you ask me about my dating life. If I have something to share with you, I'll tell you. Mm. So I also find that really interesting. So maybe it was just a personal thing to me. Yeah. And, like, it, again, it's personal to me. But I think, first of all, that's just, like, your friends knowing who you are. Yeah. I think what I would say that I, which, again, is really funny, is, like, What I don't appreciate is, like, my friends that are in relationships or whatever, and it's, like, the only thing they ask me about is my dating life. Uh Or if they get into relationships, it's, like, they fall off the face of the earth. Like, I never hear from them. You know what I mean? No, I do agree with that. Until something goes wrong in their relationship, then suddenly I'm responsible for keeping their head above water when they're, like, going through their turmoil. But it's, like... This has to be a two-way street. Like, I think that's a big thing is making sure that relationships feel consistently like a two-way street. Yeah, or when you keep telling someone, like, nope, I'm not dating right now. I'm not focusing on it. And every time you see them, they're like, any updates? It's like, well, I just told you last yeah, week. Yeah, so like, instead I'm not of that, focusing like, on that, why don't you be like, let's go out and grab drinks. Like, talk to people. Like, whether you're focusing it yeah. or not, like, pivot the narrative. You know what I mean? Like, as the friend, pivot the yeah. narrative. You're like, well, like, cool. Do you want to go grab a drink? Like, let's go out and, like, do something social, yeah. you know? And I know that, I, I think this is the other thing, too. I think just, like, in any dynamic, 
oftentimes when people get in a relationship, because I've done this too, it's like, A, I've definitely done the like falling off the face of the earth in the mm. love bubble thing. Um, but I also think like, you think that you like every like your life is like so all consuming mm. that you don't ever think like maybe I should say that Friday night like can I go to dinner with so and so because I know that they're single like I don't have to be like with my partner or yeah. not doing anything because I have a partner like you also can put yourself out there for your friend which I think is super important yeah I feel like that's one thing I really tried to do in this relationship is I very intentionally when I moved to LA was like I don't want to meet someone until I establish a friend group because mm -hmm. I want my life here. Yeah. I want my friends here. I don't want to meet someone and then just become friends with like their friends, girlfriends and that be my whole life. So now that I'm in a relationship and I still have a lot of single girlfriends, it's really important to me that I continue to like nurture those relationships because they were there for me when I was alone and of had course. no one. So like, I think that comes with age, though, and Agreed. having experience. Because you're like, oh, I don't like when all my friends did that to me, so, like, uh, why would I do it to them? So, I'll also argue, though, like, I feel like it's not... I, I feel like it's, like, age, but I, I just think that certain people yeah. are a certain type of way, and you just have to accept them. It's some personality But traits. I think in accepting them, it's also very okay for you as an individual to be, like... I like want to be here for you, but like I'm not gonna break my back. Like that's yeah, one this thing doesn't my work therapist for me. said to me that like I will always carry with me is like I will bend my back for people, but I will never break my back for them, mm. or bend over backwards for people, but I will never break my back for them. Yeah, and it's like my favorite saying because it was such an aha moment for me, and I think that happens a lot with people that get in relationships and then drop off the face of the earth, and then when they that relationship ultimately doesn't work out because I think a lot of the factor of falling off the face of the earth means like they're in a toxic relationship. Yeah, honestly. Like when they don't have that balance. Especially but when if it, your partner doesn't want you to have that friend yes, time. Yes. And That's so weird. when like things come back around the fold, their expectation of you dropping what you're doing to be their like solo companion or whatever set that boundary yeah. and like remind yourself that it's okay that like you still continue to have your life despite somebody quote-unquote needing you mm. and like i've justified it and maybe this isn't the right thing i've been like they weren't there for me when i needed them and i vocalized that like i wasn't a priority so like i don't need to make them a priority and mm. that sucks no it's true but it's true it's true and it's also like we're at the point where i don't know like i also want my friend time yeah like i for example, I got my weekends mixed up. I had brunch last weekend with girlfriends and I thought it was this past, it was two weekends ago. I thought it was this past weekend and I was going to Palm Springs and I was prepared to drive back early in the morning Sunday oh to go God. to brunch with my girlfriends and make it. Yeah. Because I wanted to be there with my friends and I was going to have my weekend with Sean and then have brunch with my friends and that was like really important to me. It turns out I got the weekends wrong so I was able to do both, both completely fine. But it was something that I was, like, willing to prioritize. But, yeah, I just I just do think it's an interesting topic because I'm sure there are people listening that are like me that wished more friends yeah. had asked. And then I'm sure there are more friends that are like, I don't need you to ask, but just be a good friend. So, may I ask, like, why did you want them to ask? Like, I explained, like, why I didn't mm -hmm. care if they asked, I guess. But, like, why? Like, I'm genuinely curious if you're open to sharing. I think... I think it's a double-edged sword because part of me wanted them to ask, but part of me didn't because I didn't have any updates to share and that mm -hmm. also felt kind of shitty. But I think part of me just wanted to feel recognized too for things outside of my work. Got it. Like, I felt like everyone else, it was more on like an emotional level. I wanted people to be like, how are you? Are mm -hmm. you okay that you're single? Why aren't you dating? Why... Is it yeah. hard out? Like, it was more just like that genuine care of I felt like I was so invested in their babies and their weddings and that their you marriages. That genuine empathy back. Yes. And it was like, I'm genuinely happy for them. So it's like, I want them to genuinely understand that maybe I'm not in the same position. Okay. I understand that. That's so interesting that it's like, you were like, I don't feel 100% happy, for lack of a better term. And yeah. I want you to acknowledge that. Yes. And I want to know that, like, you care and you're here for me because I feel there's, like, something missing. Like, clearly or... I'm lonely. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, you not asking me doesn't 
make me feel any better. But but it makes me know that like you're aware. Like it's them being aware of it. But now I find that I'm on the opposite end where I find it really hard to like. So for example, I've a friend back home who's single Mm -hmm. and she's not interested in dating at all right now and like i kind of love that Mm -hmm. but she's very like yeah i'm so happy with my life like i'm not interested in dating and so i don't really ask her that much because she's so open about it and we talk about it and the other day we were on the phone and i said to her i'm like are you trying to date at all just because we hadn't checked in about it in a few weeks and she was like no still the same and i was like okay good i was like yeah i hope i wanted to ask i hope you don't mind mind that i'm asking and she's like no i think it's great that you asked like and we just had that like open line of communication yeah and i kind of explained to her i'm like yeah sometimes when i was single like i felt this way and she was like no i don't feel that way so i'm like okay good to know i'll continue to ask you and check in to your point it's like it's exactly what we're saying it's like i you as my friend would ask me and i'm like i like appreciate that you asked yeah like i'm good and i'll let you know if Mm. i'm not but you've created a space where i feel comfortable coming to you if i'm like truly really lonely today yeah whereas like there are certain friends that are so um like insular once they get in a relationship that's like i don't even want to talk to you about it yeah like oh i have no desire to open up to you of all yeah. people because like yeah you're just not the kind of person that's made it feel comfortable to go to th- those things with but i think like first of all i will say you do a really good job of like staying in touch with your friends even in like being in a new relationship and i'm curious do you think that it's because you're kind of like semi long distance like you have more like do you think if you were always together Mm. it would be the same i thought about this before myself because i never want to be that person that's like i can hang out tonight because he's busy yeah and i actually don't think it's why because there's a lot of times when i will leave him here at my apartment and still go do my thing i because we're long distance yeah so the last week when i went to brunch I was like, stay at my apartment so I could see you when I'm home. I went out for four hours, and then I came home, and we hung out the rest of the night. Yeah. And or, like, like, the night you got pasta, which I still <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I literally was out all day. Yeah. And then I came home, and he was still here. I'm like, okay, let's hang let's out. Let's go get full beat. Yeah. Let's get pasta. <laughs> so, like, I actually think I've just realized it's really important to me, but I also think I'm with a partner that makes me feel, like... Empowered to do that. And secure. Like, I mm-hmm. don't feel like I need to see him every waking second because I might lose him. He's going to walk away. I would love. Like, I would love somebody to break that down. Yeah, I think that's honestly part of it. I'm like, oh, he doesn't care. And it would be the same. Like, it's kind of hard because he moved here, like, a few months before me. And with his work schedule, he didn't have the opportunity to make as many friends here. Yeah. Because I work from home. Like, I have way more free time. Mm-hmm. Like, he can't really, like, go join, like, intramurals. Like, he's working, like... 12 hour days yeah so he hasn't really had the opportunity and like we see his friends when we can like but his friends live back home or far away so he doesn't have that opportunity and just because he doesn't he still wants me to have that yes you know for sure so we just try to make it work and then i invite him and include him like when i can when it's right and the time feels fine yeah but i think i'm just aware i think i'm too hyper aware of the things that people did when you were single yes i don't think it's too i think it's actually really nice and again i know how much of an empathetic person you are so i think it speaks a lot to your character thank you and i think it's important to you so you like are very mindful of it but i don't think it's too much because i'm the kind of person don't worry, you're not like blowing up my phone or anything <laughs> <laughs> well i'm the kind of person that like if someone did something i didn't like I try to do the opposite. I'm like, oh, that made me feel shitty. So, like, I'm going to try to not do that. So, I feel like I go out of my way to, like, try to, like, learn from others. But I'm also LOLing because I'm just, like, I love how I'm, like, it's been six weeks. I haven't had a chance today. I literally, like, ended something with somebody right after Valentine's Stop. (laughs) Your girl's just, like, ready to go, you know? (laughs) I think that feels, honestly, though, the last time we spoke, you weren't, like, you were, like, I was "Um, in a totally, I had way too many things on the list before. I don't have time to date right now. Like, I can't focus on it. Whereas, it's nice to hear you be, like, I'm ready. It's because we talked about this, too, I don't know if it was, like, on the podcast or not, but it was, like, the moving and that Mm. space swallowing me. I did not love, like, Mm -hmm. I'm so much happier, even in the month I've been in this space. It changes everything. Even if it's, like, not perfect yet or whatever, like, I feel... Like, I'm levitating. Good. I'm so much happier. Oh, I'm such a believer in your space Mm -hmm. and your mind. It's so correlated, and I think that... 
I don't even know if it's sometimes the physical space. Sometimes I think it's the mental of starting anew yeah. as well. I think mine is a lot physical. Physical, space, yeah. We've t- I, again, offline, but like yeah. so much of the natural light piece mm-hmm. was like a big thing of it. But like, yeah, I'm just so much happier. Good. I think that's great that you feel ready because I think like the energy that you put out there is the energy that you receive and yeah. it's just also like science <laughs> and I think like that situation was like very casual so like I realized also like I'm ready again for because I was like a long casual situation yeah, and you're like this is just wasted. A it's just like a holding casual. space it was holding space in a time when I felt not ready to be vulnerable and put myself out there and like find like an emotional chemistry that I really want but I think I'm there now so that's Mm. kind of how I've been like going on the apps but what's been super interesting is like I'm trying I was writing my girlfriend at home because I was like talking to this one guy and I was like oh my god I have such a crush on him but he's away right now and blah 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 and I was just like I'm trying to like not make it that deep like like, Plan I don't even know this person. With him before you've or, met. like, talk myself out of it. Like, yes, again, this is what yes. I do. I don't go the plan my wedding life route. I go the, like, the talk myself out of it route. Like, I go the, I go the, uh, I love my piece. We're going to look so hot together in pictures. <laughs> like, I go the, like, fully picturing us, like, at our first dance. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yes, I 100% understand that. Yeah. I, I think, though that's the thing with apps like at the end of the day they are kind of superficial because you're only seeing a picture a job an education level and i'm like let's just go that's the thing i'm like if you're if you don't want to just like meet right away well i don't even care if it's like dinner like let's get a cup of coffee let's go for a walk like just let's meet like i want to meet you in person if you're not teeing that up or like taking my hints or whatever and i'm very traditional i'm like the guy needs to to extend the ask at least first like i'm like unmatch move on i'm done because like i am looking for something serious yeah so that's you what i'm here for want a person that's looking for something and i think somebody that's looking for something serious will want to meet right mm-hmm. away unless they're you know like and i'm not here but let's meet at this date when i'm back like fine i'll talk to you you know yeah because that's what i think was refreshing about like my first date with sean like i remember going into it being like I'm going to be so myself and so honest about what I want. Yeah. And, like, I always found it hard to say, I want this without the person thinking you want that with them when you don't know them yet. Yes. So, I tried to word it. Like, I remember we both, first date, like, I don't know how it came up. I think we obviously just had chemistry and felt comfortable Mm -hmm. talk, like, opening up to each other. But I remember just being like, yeah, like, I'm looking to date someone, but it needs to be the right person. I'm not just... So I would always preface it by saying, like, I don't want to just date, like, Joe Schmo. I could go do that. Yeah. But I'm looking for a long-term relationship if the right person comes along. And he was like, I feel the exact same way. So I already knew he wanted to meet someone. I wanted to meet someone. You were on the same page before you met each other. And you were both comfortable with it working out or not working out if it was or wasn't right. Yes. And there was another guy who I had talked to like a few days before I met Sean on a dating app. And he had a phone call. (laughs) I know. We had a phone call. And he was like, it was so bad. And he was like, what are you looking for? And I said the same thing. And he's like, oh, like, I just want something casual. So that's the thing. I'm not going to go on this first date then. But like, yeah. Be free. I don't want that. I don't want a casual thing. Correct. I, last summer, like, I wanted something casual. That's what I found. It was great. And it was perfect. When that started to change and, like, he wanted something more serious, I was like, we're not on the same page. Yeah. So. Rethink it. Yeah. Yeah. Love, yeah. See you later. Yeah. Not going to work out. So, I think just being super upfront with, like, your expectations from the beginning because the right person will want the same things at the same time. Yes. Like, I had someone write into my Instagram yesterday about timing, and I wrote, I was like, I don't believe timing is a thing. Like, I think the right person will make the time work. Yes. I know, it's controversial. But I think timing is the right thing. I think timing is the sense of, like, you, like, what we just said, like, you have to be in your right timing, and that person has to be in their right timing, and it has to align enough Or, like, you have to feel it enough to go the distance. I mean, in the sense of someone being like, I don't have enough time to date you. It's like, you make the time. That is different. Yes. You make the time when you want to see someone. Please, if this man that I was talking to lately, I'm I'm like, if he was here, I'd be like, I'd be so tired and I would go meet this guy. Because, like, it's exciting. Like, I'm interested, genuinely. When you're interested, 
It doesn't matter if you're half asleep. Like, <laughs> you make the time. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think it's always an excuse when someone's like, oh, I don't know. I'm too busy. It's like, well, then we're not a fit. Yeah. You'd make it the time. It says everything you um, need to know. Let's see what else was on my little... T- oh. Oh, I had a tip for approaching someone at a bar. Okay. That I wanted to share. I used to use this all the time at the Jersey Shore. Like, <laughs> post-college. And I just thought it was iconic. And someone had written in asking me a tip on how to approach someone at a bar. And I think that this is the best pickup line. If you want to go up to a guy at the bar, you walk up to him and you just be like, how do I know you? Like, where do I know you from? Mm -hmm. And it starts the whole conversation of, well, I don't know. I went to school here. Oh, I live on this side of town. Where do you live? Oh, where do you go to high school? And it starts conversation. And if a vibe is there, you will continue talking. Yes. If a vibe isn't and they're just like, I don't know. Or like never met around. Then you you know know they're not into you. It's a good way to like easily know if you're going to get like, If you're going to keep talking or if they're going to, like, let you down gently without putting yourself out there and going up to them and being like, hey, I'm really interested in you. Are you single? Just ask them. Just be like, I feel like I've met you before. And play the name game. And I think it's such an easy end. I love that. That's a good one. Maybe I should test it. No, I'm telling you, there's no harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. Because the least thing, the other thing they could just say is, like, I don't think we've met. And you're like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Have a good night. Yeah. Sorry. I must be mistaking you with somebody else. But if they're interested in you and want to talk to you and like your energy and think you're cute, regardless, they'll go with it. They'll go with regardless, it. Regardless, they're going to be like, I don't know, but like, what's your name? Let's get yeah. to know each other. You're right. It's such a good line. It's a really good one. I, know. I like that. Now I want to go out and use that. <laughs> I think it's perfect. Like, it's just no harm, no foul. You don't get rejected. You leave with your ego intact. Yeah, I think, too, the beginning of dating, like I said, like, with these, like, guys and, like, texting, and I'm like, it's not that deep, like, stop overthinking it. It's just, like, check your ego at the door. Like, if they don't like you, move the fuck on. Mm-hmm. Like, And yeah. if you don't like them, move the fuck on. Stop trying to fit, like, a round peg into a square hole. Also, just, if peace. they don't like you, you don't want them. Yes. And it doesn't mean anything about you, it which just, I think a lot of times people forget. Why would you forget. want to be with someone that doesn't like you? I've never gotten that concept. I don't know, man. Um, okay, we have to move into pop culture. I know. Because we only have a few minutes. I know. This is such a quickie. Um, I know, guys. Sorry. We have busy work schedules today. Did you so listen just... to the Country Carter album? Oh, of course. Do you have a favorite song? It was. It's too long to like be like, oh, I know every single song on the <laughs> album. You know what I mean? Why do you know every single song on no, the album? No, but like, I'm just like, I listen to it a lot. No, no, I listen to it my whole ride to Tom Springs. Yeah. Um, but obviously there's ones that I focused in on. I really love the collaborations. I, I know, the Miley Cyrus one. The Miley Cyrus one's fantastic. The course is a little repetitive, but mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. I love the one with Post Malone. I Same. think it is such a vibe. It's so cute. I love Jolene. Um... I love a lot of them. I think it's really great. The only thing I will say, and like, I don't care. It could be in the country category. Like, I really don't yeah. care. It should be. I didn't really get like a super country vibe from it. But I know that there are country elements, like the music in the background and stuff. But to me, it still wasn't like country, country. But I think it's fantastic. I don't See, care what it is. I think it's more, I love country music. I think it's like country, country, because it's like grassroots country. I feel like you're thinking of more country pop, like a Morgan Wallen, yes. Sam Hunt, like Carrie Underwood. Like that's more like pop country. I think it's more when I think of country, I think of the twang in your voice. Yes. Okay. <laughs> like Miley Cyrus, when they sing on that song, Miley's voice has that like little yeah. country Till twang. The day I yeah. Die. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like she has that. Like, yeah. So for me, it's more and like Post the Malone tone. has that a little bit Post too. Has it. So for me, it's more just like Beyonce has a voice of an angel. Yeah. But to me, she has a very like sultry, like R and B, whatever type of voice. Regardless of whatever category it's in, I th- I think it's really great music. I know. God. Did you like it? I'm obsessed with. Yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's really. I good. love country music though. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I like. I'm feral for country, low key. So like, I know I like want to go to Stagecoach. Um, I know I'm not because I'm like Same, I'm gonna I'm be there for like 20 days. Yeah. I'm like I can't spend another weekend here. Uh huh. But um, yeah, I definitely next year we'll put on our list, right? And maybe she'll headline next year or something cool. Alyssa, I know. I bet she'll definitely. You're so right. Mm-hmm. Especially if she announces a tour, 100. percent She'll be a part of it. I think. Oh my god! Like stage yeah. bay. Like I'm like. Wait. What we- one thing really quickly I wanted to talk about was the Betty with the good hair situation with Jay Z. Oh Becky, Becky. yeah. Oh, Betty. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> Betty's Becky. Taylor Swift. <laughs> like if Jay Z cheated on Beyonce with this woman allegedly, 
there's no hope. Why for are we bashing the woman? I just don't get the whole thing. So I think there was like a lot of discourse about this on uh, the internet this oh, weekend. Oh, there was. Yes, because I think was there's my two initial things. Takeaway. I'm is like, like, bash your husband. We did. She did Lemonade, which is an entire yes. album dedicated to dragging her husband. Yeah, dragging so I feel like maybe they have a thing of being like, I'm gonna get this out and then we're gonna put it to bed. But like everybody was just kind of like, girl, like what for this man like people were like post it's like i know this is my man's you know, please don't take my man's or whatever and they're like him and it was like the ugliest photo of Jay-Z no that's kind of what i was just kind of like but like he did this she mm-hmm. doesn't owe you anything unless they're great friends like we don't know the inner workings i know or i think there was type some type of relationship or unless she kept reaching out after you know like there's probably something that a made beyonce that be crossed. like girl stop mm-hmm. but i just thought it was a little yeah a little um, misguided blame. Yes. A little misguided, misdirected anger. Yeah. Um, next topic, really quickly. Let's just go over, like, the top, yes. top ones. I have caught up on Summer House. Okay. What do you have here about the after show? So, there was a thing on the after... So, have you heard about these or seen these clips of these after shows? There's, like, after shows for Summer House, Vanderpump. Like, where online, like, where they recap on yes, Bravo? Yeah. It's, like, they'll go and they'll talk about the episode and things mm-hmm. like that. So, there was an after show. I just saw a clip of it on, like, Queens of Bravo or something, where it was, like, Kyle talking about Lindsay. And it was Carl and Kyle on the after show. Oh, yes. Show. I think I might have seen this. And Kyle was, like, for Lindsay to go on that, like, tour... Of, like, I was blindsided, I was blindsided, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, and then for her to, he's like, I don't know how she doesn't watch herself back and not realize how she contributed to your feeling like we shouldn't be together and get married. And I kind of like agree. I can't believe I'm saying this. Like, I agree with Kyle, but I always felt this way. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if Lindsay was trying to, like, I, I also feel this way. Like, Scandaball had just happened and like was she trying to like float on like the she coattails of that of and control the narrative but like she is not coming off well I don't know if it's an edit I don't know if the reunion's gonna give us something else like girlfriend needs a reality check but no, like I, I'm not putting it all on her like Carl also like I you should never got in a relationship with not being sober for a year but he also I feel like see him trying to bend being mm-hmm. like maybe it's me maybe i'm r-. and it's it's really insightful to see it go down because you're like oh, oh. why was craig conover conover the only one in the press that was like yeah i saw this coming why yeah. was everyone else like i'm blind it's like Number one guy. No on wonder why Craig, Craig said that. Look at what's happening. Yes. But I guess the only people that really talked to the press, like we, Jesse Solomon didn't, West didn't, but because we didn't know all, they were on the cast. Had they, they probably would have been like, "Fuck yeah, we saw this coming." But also, they. What I found more interesting with the newbies is like the acknowledgement in the house. Like people in the house are acknowledging it, yes. and I feel like a justice for Danielle because like who the fuck had her back last summer? Yeah. But, like, I'm so happy because I always agreed with Danielle. And I'm glad these newbies are acknowledging it. But this also makes so much sense to me of, like, why Carl wanted cameras for them to break up. I'm pretty sure he, yeah, he feels like she spins things. And he's like, this is the thing with someone like her. It's like, is she a master manipulator or is her perception... Yeah, your perception is your reality. So, like, is her perception just so screwed? Or is she having the same perception as us and then spinning it? Like, I don't know which one it is. Yeah, like, is she panicking and trying to save face? Yes. And she just thinks she's so good at it. Or is her perception just completely different than I don't know. You know? That's a question for her therapist. I don't know either, (laughs) but it's interesting watching it. Um, I still think that Danielle last season was wrong in the sense that I think when two people know each other for, like, seven years and get engaged after a year, I think that's really a fine timeline in terms of like dating timeline knowing each other i understand why things would move faster in that situation i agree but where i didn't and this was like agnostic to danielle was like it is like one of the first rules of aa that you should not get into a relationship in your first year of being in the program and they did yeah and they got engaged in their first year of him being in the program and that was my red flag especially when she isn't like me 
and is someone like whereas like I could be sober. And yeah, it wouldn't and bother she me. like stopped drinking with him, but then she yeah. started drinking again. Like, especially when she and, has like, her own issues around alcohol in terms of like the way she handles situations yes. and yeah. stuff. So that's what I was like. I know. Crazy. All right, we have time for like one more little did thing. Did you watch Vanderpump Villa? I didn't have time. To. Okay. Is it great? I watched it is a goddamn mess in the best way. Okay. Please like save it for your weekend if you want to like I will. chill. I think Sean will like it. Like it is it's gonna like, be like oh, below God. deck meets Vanderpump rules, like meets Summer House. It's and so like good. is the cast attractive and cool and great yes. and stylish yeah. all those things there's like okay there's like cast that you'll be like oh i feel like the compare to like these vanderpump people and there's people that you're like rooting for and there are people you're like gosh you're it's like the type cast of the original crew kind of some of some of it and then some of them are just like really lovely and then some of them you're like you are a hot mess express and that makes for really good tv Okay, I'm excited. Watch it. I'm even behind on the val. I'm behind on all of my Bravo shows. I'm behind on everything, but I prioritize this one because I saw it and I know I was like, "Damn, I'm so curious." I need to watch it. Um, And then the other thing was there was the Bachelor finale, and then they did have this um, thing come out about the Golden Bachelor that him and his wife are living separately, which is interesting. I know. I mean, I I go back and forth on this because, A, I don't actually think they like each other. I think they just got married for TV. How did they get married? Yeah. The money. Because they got married on TV. Of course. The man needs the money. I just can't picture people like that age, like doing stuff for fame. See, I can't. It's not fame. It's the money. It's like, what do they care? true <laughs> so true i was like what do they care like, what do they care i'm 78 years old you're gonna cut me what 500k to get married on tv okay that's money yeah. for my kid no problem yeah yeah that is interesting especially when you're like retired and you don't have income yes. coming in you're like whatever <laughs> that is so funny i mean i like I would do it. I feel weird about it because it's like, I felt like they were literally the golden. Like, he was like, oh, so beloved. Enamored. And now I look at him and I'm just like, are you who you say you are? No. <laughs> it's giving Dirty John in such a serious way. I'm just like, so I cannot look at you the same, Jerry. But then it's like, did the media do this to him? Like, are we just those people that, like, love to tear people down? I mean, I don't really think he got teared down. Like, yeah. he got... Like, he wasn't canceled or anything. I think he just... Uh, they did try to cancel him. They for tried, being like a player. Like, I don't think anybody really cared. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what if you so going to go like, after Grandpa? I'm going to go ahead and get married on TV and Teresa. Maybe I'll swindle you, but... Crazy. I don't know. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. All right. Well, I think that's it for this week. That's it for this week. Perfect. I love you. I love you. We Wait, will. next week, I'm like, tell me all the reasons why you think I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the people writing in? No. You owe me. <laughs> oh, I don't think there's any reasons. <laughs> oh, you sound like my mom. <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. I don't think there's any reason why anyone's single versus not. I just think it's timing. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's like any character things. Or, like, See, but this is where I also am like, I look at somebody like Lindsay and what we know of her from Summer House. I know. It's like, I know why you're single. I don't act that way, but I'm like, no, I'm the know. opposite. I'm like, why, how are you always in relationships? Mm-hmm. That's what I don't get. I mean, I think how some of these men love the crazy chicks. I think, I don't know. I was about to just poop on the pillow. Oh. <laughs> I think it's like, yeah, like, okay, I hate to say it, like Kristen Doty. Mm-hmm. She has serial boyfriends. Yeah. But I think you could be with someone like the men that she's with. But you don't choose I don't not want to be. To. And that's how I felt when I was single. It goes back to, I could be with Joe Schmo. Yeah, I'm not going to settle I for mean, him. that is so fair. Like, I, d- I think I that's could, why. Yes. It's I have called, such a... It's called a high-worth woman. High-value okay, woman. Okay, Andrew Tate. <laughs> <laughs> is that where that's from? Yes. <laughs> it's like a misogynistic no. high-value man. No, they say high-value, but can't there be high-value women? I mean, not in his world. Well, in my world. Oh, yes. Yeah. We Alyssa are. Tate. Alyssa Tate. <laughs> and and that's world. all the time we have for <laughs> yeah. this week. <laughs> oh my God. That is so funny. I was wondering where I got that from. Yeah. I think because you a, said it once on a podcast probably. joking about him. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, it's guys. Good. Well, also the last plug if you mm-hmm. don't follow us on TikTok, you show me. Our TikTok is popping off. I know. Listen, Lex, on TikTok. Obviously, follow us on we Instagram. We have like 700,000 views on one video, but like, like 80,000. Our TikTok. I love that. We're so killing give us it. a follow. Before it goes away. Before it goes away. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll pivot to Canada. All right, guys. We will see you next See week. you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.